In this video, we're talking moody cinematic. Let's turn this into this. But before we start the tutorial, let's check how these clips were shot. I have recorded some BTS footage while shooting these, so you can see how I did it, because this is extremely important to set the tone for the grade. It only takes about 30 seconds, so please stick around. Yeah. project was a lot of fun to shoot so thanks Frank and Max for helping me out there. Let's check how this was graded. A quick note though, all the clips that I use in this project will be available for free for you to download off my website. They're in B-RAW so you have full flexibility. I'll also add the power grade and a lot which you can buy for just a few pennies. So let's get started. The first clip we're going to talk about is the skate clip I shot out of the back of my dad's car. Now let's see what we are working with. I select all the notes and press command D to deselect all these notes. You can also click on this one, but then you cannot sort of get them back in one by one. So the first thing I always do when I start grading is I add a CST, color space transform. You can find these in the open effects window, just drag and drop them onto your node and then fill in all these, uh, you know, these drop down boxes. I shot it on a pocket 4K in generation four color science. So I click on this one, then the input gamma is black magic pocket 4K gen four. The output color space is Rec 709 and the output gamma is Rec 709 as well. Now we know that, let's select our um, CST. Then after my CST, I go one step back and I add in my um, exposure. Then I also add in my noise reduction. This is because whenever I go down the line in grading, I want a clean output. The thing is, I'm gonna take it off right now because if I record the screen and I put noise reduction on there, my computer will fly to the moon. So. Let's not do that. Let's continue to the curves. Uh, oh, by the way, the exposure is very basic. I just went into the wheels and I just dragged up the offset a little bit and played around with the, the lift gamma gain wheels. Um, this is not very interesting or special, it's just playing around until you feel like you have a good match or a good exposure. I always have a look to my scopes um, because in the beginning part, I do not want to clip yet. I will try and keep all the data available to me here. All right, also played around with the log wheels to have a little bit more control over the shadow areas. But um, yeah, that's just playing around with the primaries. All right, sweet. Let's continue to the curves. Um, I call this curve, but I actually did just add in a little bit of contrast over here. So I didn't play with the curves at all. Um, so add that in. Now next to boost. Now this is where it's get interesting because as you can see, I used a RGB mixer and some log wheels, all right? So let's go to the log wheels first. There you can see that I dragged the midtones up to like, well, say 60% of orange. And then I played around with the high range. All right. So if you play around with the high range, you can see what happens in the shot. If I take this whole note off, you can see that it makes quite a difference. Let's put it back to 620. All right, so you can see that there's just a little bit more pop into the trees and you know, it just gives a little bit more depth to the image that way. All right, next up is the RGB mixer. Here I just played around with the uh, blue channel and the green channel and then the blue channel and not only the blue channel on the red output. And if I deselect this, you can see that it makes a minor adjustment, especially to the building here. Um, it makes it just a little bit more blue and again, it sort of separates Max from the background. That was the idea here. All right, so now the grade, this is a pretty ridiculous um, look that I went for because it's very green. And this is because I knew I was going to work with a Kodak 2823 uh, D65 film look. Yeah, so that film look 
sort of works really well on green footage. And once you know that, you can get some amazing results. All right, so what did I do here? Very simple. I went to the primary wheels, went to the wheel section, and I dragged like the offset a little bit over to yellow, just, just a touch. And then into the log wheels, I went a little bit nuts. Like I just dragged up the shadows a bit, then, you know, lower the, the midtones to the greens, push the highlights a little bit over to blue and push the offset a little bit over to yellow. Then I played around with the high and low range. You can see the amazing difference that this makes. So what the low and the high range do, it's actually working like a mixer. Yeah, so whenever I push in a lot of magenta, let's do it here, and then I take out all the low range, nothing is happening. But once I start to add in that low range, you can see that my shadow area is sort of filled with that magenta. All right, so this way you have a lot of control over where you want your shadows, your colors to be affected. All right, so let's put this back to where it was. The high range, same story. Yeah, so I put in a little bit of blue and green. Let's see what happens if I fill it in all the way. You see that the entire image is very green. But once I start taking it out, you see that the high range, like the the highlights are more tailored towards blue. Yeah, but once that I start to bring in that high range, you can see that the greens are coming back. So you just have to play around with these tools until you think you, you know, see something that satisfies you, that, that looks good in your opinion. So this adjustment node is basically a curves. If you go to the set versus saturation, you can sort of tell resolve what part of the saturation scale needs to be black. Yeah, so when you go over to the left side, this is all black. And I want that my shadows, my true shadows will remain black all the way. Yeah, so let's see what happens if I drag this over. You can see that from the darker areas, the colors start to fade out. All right, so this way you can make sure that whatever you do in your grade, if you make it green, if you make your shadows green or blue or red or whatever, you will make sure that your blacks, like your true blacks will remain black. All right, now let's see what happens if we add in that film look, bam. All right, so this is where the entire sort of image comes together. All right, because this film look, this Kodak 2328 film look is very strong, very contrasty. That's why I put it in a compound node. Now, I didn't add any effects on this compound node, but normally you can just drag this gain knob down if you think that the um, output is too strong. All right, that's why I put it in a compound node. But in this case, I thought this looked kind of sick, like just, I, I really liked it. So let's see what's in this compound node. Show compound node. So here we have another color space transform. So let's see what I did here. So I put this input color space on use timeline. So that's basically Rec 709 because I transformed my timeline into Rec 709. Then the input gamma is Rec 709. I just added it in there. Then the output color space is use timeline. And then the output gamma is Airy Log C. Now, the reason I do this is because a film print emulation LUT, like the Kodak um, 2823, or um, you know, like the the Rec 709 Fujifilm, uh, all these LUTs they work on log footage. So it doesn't matter if I add this one onto my grade that is already transformed to a Rec 709 color space. All right, so you want to transform your entire grade back to a log curve. And because every log C is a very, very nice log curve to use, I use every log C. And then I transform that log image back to a like Rec 709 image because these LUTs will eventually turn your, um, your uh, footage back into Rec 709. Rec 709 Kodak 2823D60 I used here. All right, I hope that makes sense. If not, let me know in the comments below because I'd love to help you out here. All right, so then lastly, I added in some sharpness. I always pretty much use 0.48, that's my magic number. And then I got another note here that I also took off because otherwise my computer will not uh, let me record and do all these, uh, these things together. Um, that would be my grain. Let me add it in there just for good measure, film grain then 
35400T and then I just play around with the grain size and the grain strength. These are usually the two tools I use. All right, and then I noticed that I, I got pretty good results. So, uh, cool. All right, so let's check what we have in our timeline. Yeah, so this is a skate shot. Now, let's see what happens if we take off the entire grade. This looks pretty flat. Now, this looks very sort of moody, but saturated, yeah? It is pretty dark, but that was intended. I like to have a dark clip when I want something in a moody in a moody setting. So let's go over to the second clip, which is this um, drawing clip. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that I framed it pretty like intensely. So I shot it underneath, I think like a, a stand or something. Um, so yeah, like a wooden stand um, to really focus the, the viewer's eyes onto what Max is drawing or, or writing there. All right, now this is the log image. Let's see when we turn these nodes on one by one, what happens? So I turn on the CST first, command D to enable this one. Then my exposure, then my white balance, but I didn't do any white balance adjustments here. Then my curves, that already makes a lot of difference. Then my boost, as you can see, this boost adds a little bit of magenta to the skin tones. Otherwise, the um, the Kodak LUT was too intense and the skin tones became green. And I didn't really like that. Then the grade, as you can see, very green. The adjustment so that my blacks will remain black. And then the Kodak LUT. All right. And some sharpness and, of course, the noise reduction. Um, and that is it. That is the moody look that I wanted to go for. Like a really intense, dark, um, more tailored towards green look. All right. Next shot. This one is a little bit more exposed to light because from this shot, I changed my light to a different angle because otherwise I, you know, I couldn't fit between the desk and the window. So this uh, shot clearly has a lot more light falling onto the hand. Now let's see what happens here. Alt S to oh, Alt D to deselect all the nodes. Then add in our CST exposure. So I brought up the exposure a bit. Then the curves, the boost takes out a little bit of the green tint. Then the grade makes it very green. The adjust, and then the LUT and some sharpness. All right, so that looks very moody, very interesting, spooky, mysterious, <laughs> you know what I mean? Then we also did some surf shots here. Now, this is of course pretty difficult because it's in bright daylight. So how are you going to make something like that moody? Well, let's see what we started off with. So this is exactly very bright, all right? So let's see what I did here. The first thing of course is my CST. I didn't use a noise reduction node because it was a very clean image. Um, Usually whenever I bring down the exposure, I'm not using a, a noise reduction note because I feel like it's not necessary. Then my white balance made a little bit of a, like a pink, like a magenta shift here. Added in some contrast. The boost again takes a little bit of that magenta out. Then the green, like the grade, adds in a lot of that green texture on the water. I adjust to make sure that the the, like the dark areas on the wetsuit remain black, and then my compound node, and then my sharpening node. So that makes it very moody. Um, of course, you lose a little bit of that separation between the, the bright sky and the and the subject here because, yeah, the sun was just rising and it was just not too much to work with. But eventually, I found out that this this kind of grade really fit well into the edit. So that's what I used eventually. Then the last one or second to last one is the underwater shot. Now this was pretty tricky. The funny thing was that we brought out a lot of lights, but this one was only shot with a Godox LC500R, which is like a RGB light stick. Um, and it's yeah, pretty, pretty strong, pretty good light. So let's see what we are working with. As you can see now, um, yeah, it's pretty bright. So I didn't use a noise reduction note on this one because of course I brought down my exposure. So let's see, oh, let's see what happens if we enable these notes. 
So this already looks pretty cool to me. I mean, this could work for a different project, you know. But the thing that I really wanted to go for that I was intended to shoot when, you know, we did this shot was that I actually only wanted the hair to be eliminated and then, you know, these bubbles to to show up really well. So that's what we what we did. So the white balance to make it a little bit more yellowish. Then the curves to pop it out a little bit. This doesn't really do a lot in the water because there's not too many uh, magenta tones to work with, but the green one definitely makes it look like some dirty pond or something. <laughs> the adjustment to make it nice and black and then boom. This one really sells look because it is a very strong contrast curve. Again, I just left it like that. I didn't take it out by, um, you know, using the key output because I actually liked it like that. So, yeah. And sometimes, you know, of course, some people will think like, oh man, it's it's clipping or it's not the way you're supposed to do it, but I don't care. Like, I liked it. <laughs> That's what counts, you know? If you like it, if you're the, the director of that, that piece and you like it, go for it. I mean, you don't have to follow the rules always. Um, so yeah, that was me in school as well, you know, not following the rules. Anyway, um, last shot to, uh, to check. CST, exposure, white balance, nothing. Curves, boost, grade, adjust, and then the node. So sick. All right, and again here as well, went back to Airy and then to my film print emulation mode. All right. All right, guys, so to recap this whole thing, let's go over it one more time, but in a easier manner. Oh, we forgot one clip. It was actually a very nice and, and nice and dark clip. Oh. Huh. Okay, let's do this one for for good measure. Exposure makes it a little bit too red in my opinion. Then I brought it up. That's why I use a noise reduction node because otherwise you'll get a lot of grain in the dark parts. Then the curves to make it pop a little bit. Boost, grade, looks ridiculous. And then dang. Yeah, so it really sort of isolates the fingers here with the tattoos and, and, and the threat here. Like That was the thing that I want you to catch your eye on. Later in this clip, I'll pull focus towards his like playing hand, as his, his trim hand. Um, so you definitely sort of follow the entire fret sort of thing. I don't know what you call that. I'm not a guitarist, but you know, you follow this and then you see his other hand play. It's pretty, pretty rad. So, um, yeah, some added sharpness and there you go. All right, so let's sum this whole thing up, all right? Okay, so clearly I went for a Kodak look. Yeah, so I went for a film print emulation look. Some people say that using a lot is not grading or anything, but I think it is because this was exactly the look that it gave me. And if I take off all these other nodes, uh, you can see that it makes an in like incredible difference. So you have to actually color grade to get the result that you want, all right? Next thing is that you have to think about the entire project as one, you know? You cannot start shooting in a very bright daylight um, surrounding and then expect it to get a very nice, sort of mysterious, moody look out of it. You need to think about all these shots prior of shooting it and to sort of get a, like a mental picture in your head of what the result must be, you know? This was exactly what I was thinking about, you know? just one hand in focus, like a lot of dark parts in the image, but really like one particular part of that image that pops out. And, you know, with that in mind, I shot this and that really works. So what I suggest you do is whenever you start doing a project like this, write all these things down, write your ideas down on paper, like check shot deck or check other like Pinterest or YouTube or Vimeo to find some interesting look at images that really, that you really like and make a mood board and take that mood board with you on the shoot so you can either scroll through it, get inspired on the day itself, or, you know, really just ram that stuff into your head so you uh, you never forget what you are, what you're shooting. Anyway, too much rambling. I hope you like this video. It is, um, you know, something that you guys ask for a lot. So uh, I postponed it too long, but here it is. and. Um, yeah, I hope it made sense. I hope it is clear. If it's not, make sure to let me know in the comments below and I would love to uh, 
to help you out there. So um, thank you for watching and I appreciate you guys. It's been, a, it's been a hell of a ride. I'm still very, very grateful for all you guys that stick around and, um, you know, give me so much energy and motivation to keep doing what I'm doing now on YouTube. So thank you again. And uh, see you guys next time. Peace again. Sorry, Frank. <laughs>